Right, reasonably early in the morning here. Let's get into the shed. And uh, today I want to look at the... Oh. Yes, today I want to look at this, my 7S 20P pack and the uh, EP Ever STI 500 Pure Sine Wave Inverter. In fact, I want to do a bit of a capacity test rather than a load test this time. Uh, I want to see how much capacity is in this 7S 20P pack. Now, with 50 amp hours per group of cells and a nominal voltage of what is it 29.4 um, I expect well over a one kilowatt hour uh, but um, this isn't quite charged to 4.2 volts per cell and in fact if we look over here and we look on the charge controller uh, that's the solar voltage 28 volts um, there so that's four volts per cell isn't it so uh, certainly not fully charged and here is the load that i'm going to plug into the sti 500 this light bulb it's a bayonet cap um, 1900 lumen warm white um, halogen lamp so it's actually 105 watts but they claim it's the equivalent of a 133 watt lamp and this was quite difficult to get hold of because uh, these things well they're uh, really inefficient look at this on the table here it's d very red down this bottom end of the table isn't it so uh, yeah this takes apparently 105 kilowatt hours for every 1000 hours it's turned on well that's just 105 watts times a thousand isn't it so that's pretty straightforward um but yeah this is going to be my load here and as you can see it's a clear load with a small halogen lamp inside this uh, typical bulb here and uh, yeah the bayonet cap so this isn't going to be a stress test for my 7s 20p pack this is just going to be a nice constant load out and uh, yeah well we'll see how it gets on now with the bulb in the appropriate holder let's uh, turn on the inverter on the dc side and i'll turn it on on the ac side and after a few seconds that should mean the meter lights up yes zero watts zero time and uh, let's turn on the bulb there we go so apparently it's drawing 102 watts yeah so it was claimed a 105 watt bulb wasn't it so that's not too bad i guess right let's see how we get on just over 14 and a half minutes in 101 watts apparently being pulled but i've forgotten to turn off the solar so uh, that will have skewed results ever so slightly uh not not that it's a particularly nice morning or anything crumbs where has the last what uh five and a half hours gone still drawing 102 watts uh, and that's now just over half a kilowatt 5.62 and uh, on here we can see the battery is 25.7 uh, just gone past there again. Yeah, 25.7 volts in my battery banks. So that seems to be working. And I do need to have a think about the under voltage here. But the uh, the STI 500 should cut out at 21 volts. That's 3 volts per cell. 3 times 7, 21. So hopefully that's okay. So uh, we'll catch up with this in a couple more hours. Nearly 7 hours in. 0.69 of a kilowatt hour and things are getting a bit low here overall voltage 24.7 volts and if we look at the diy bms we can see that that uh, each one of those modules are starting to fall out of line a little bit here aren't they uh 3.4 volts is my lowest pack so uh yeah i'm not entirely sure how much longer this is going to last for i think there's a good chance i'm going to fall short of my one kilowatt hour well after seven hours and 11 minutes 0.73 of a kilowatt hour 
I think it's time to cancel this test. Uh, 23.8 volts overall on the 7S pack, but uh, unfortunately this pack here, pack 5, whoops, pressed the wrong button, this pack here has dropped to, uh, well what is it, 2.935 volts, so yeah, it's definitely time to uh, turn off that load and uh, allow things to recover a little bit and uh, i imagine that voltage might bounce back a little bit yes 24.1 volts there and uh, so the grand total was 0.733 kilowatt hours so 0.733 kilowatt hours or 733 watt hours is a little bit of a disappointment for me. I was hoping for better. But there are a couple of things that will help explain uh, that lower output. First of all, I'd only charged to just over 4 volts this morning. Um, perhaps this wasn't the best day to test this. I usually charge to 4.1 volts and of course these uh, cells will go up to 4.2 volts quite happily so there was definitely some capacity missing there. Secondly I've only measured the output of my inverter not the input and of course it will have losses. I was honestly hoping for one kilowatt hour on the output of that inverter but clearly we've not been able to achieve that today. But finally, clearly, I have a weak pack here in my 7S system. Cell number 5 clearly isn't as good as its neighbours. And uh, that's something I'm going to have to address. Is that a broken fuse? Is that a dodgy cell? Or perhaps just the average is a lot lower? That's definitely something else I need to check out in the future. But the big thing that this experiment highlights to me is the fact that the DIY BMS probably needs a low voltage disconnect function to be a full BMS and that doesn't seem too difficult to implement. The uh, Wemos up here has got a few spare IO pins and it's not too difficult to put a relay on uh, the main positive here or the main negative up there and completely disconnect the pack from its load uh, when one of the uh, modules or one of the groups of cells actually dips below a threshold. So yeah, I think that's definitely something uh, which could be worked on here. Well, it's time to uh, turn on the solar again and start putting some more energy and charge into these cells. And of course, that's when the uh, DIY BMS comes into its own, isn't it? Because this is very much a top balancing system. And with uh, voltages from 3 volts up to uh, 3.4 volts, I think some of these were, um, it's going to have some work to do, isn't it? When uh, all these cells get to the top of that charge and uh, hopefully I'll be able to report later that it's working absolutely fine. Oh, I must remember to turn my inverter off as well because that will be wasting power, won't it? So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you can and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.